new series. Hey guys, it's Riley and welcome to my channel on this fine Tuesday. Today I'm going to be introducing a new series that kind of started last week, but this is the first more like topic-centric video that I'm doing. I'm calling this series Trans Education. Basically what it's going to be is every Tuesday, Trans Tuesday, I'm going to be posting a trans-related video or an LGBTQ plus related video just to talk about it, get the discussion going, help you guys if you need it. I'll do videos that you guys want me to do. I've got a couple already planned out. Should be good. Well, I'm looking forward to doing this series with you guys. So here we go with the very first, like, actual episode of trans education. I feel like since today we're starting out as the first actual topic of trans education that we should cover coming out. I'm not gonna do sexuality in this video. This video is just about gender and gender identity and gender presentation. I'm gonna start out this video by saying that coming out is a different experience for everyone. It's a different experience for every trans person. It's so different. I came out in stages of sexuality before I came out with my gender. And when I came out with my gender, my sexuality changed. So it's very, very different for every single person who comes out. I feel like coming out is a lot different for gender variant individuals than it is for cis individuals who are coming out as sexuality because the thing is, is when trans people come out, a lot of times they're not just coming out as trans, they also have to clarify their sexuality to other people because other people are confused. Me as a trans man, I am gay because I am also attracted and into men. Some trans men are straight and into women. But before they transitioned or came out, they could have identified as a lesbian. So therefore their sexual sexual orientation identity changes because their gender identity has been affirmed. When I came out, I was really young. Always had anger issues as a kid and we didn't really know why. Nobody knew I was diagnosed with like oppositional defiance disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, ADD, ADHD, because they didn't know what was wrong. So they tried to put me on meds like Adderall to suppress how angry I was and to suppress how many violent outbursts I had. As a young child, like, from this time that I could start thinking for myself, so probably two or three years old, um, up until I think I was probably ten, I was absolutely miserable. I would, I hated being put in feminine clothing, I hated wearing dresses, I hated all of that. And that was just the case for me. What I tried to do as a kid was I tried to suppress that hate. I did not let it show as I got older into like later elementary and early middle school. I did not let it be seen by other people that I hated being dressed in feminine clothing. I wanted to be normal, I wanted to be like everybody else, so I was that typical girly girl who was very feminine and wore pink and did things with their hair. I just tried to fit in. I hated it, but that's what I ended up doing. I think it's confusing for a lot of trans people because they think that because they're trans, they have to fit into their genders, gender construct. And that's not entirely true. By the time I was 10 or 11, I lost it. I was like, I cannot do this anymore. I started buying cargo shorts, I got rid of all the pink in my wardrobe, and I think my parents were very, very confused at that point. I also chopped off all my hair. I didn't know the term transgender very well at the time, so I thought I was just, like, bisexual. I was probably in fifth grade when I told my parents about that, and they shrugged, they didn't really understand, and then it was probably six months or a year later that I said, hey, I'm a lesbian. This is where it gets complicated. I thought it would be easier to ease my parents and my family and my friends into the transition of me identifying as male. And this is me at 11 years old, because after, once I was 11, I had watched Degrassi, and the cat character Adam Torres, played by Jordan Tadesi, came on. And it opened my eyes, it made me research things. I was so intrigued, and I was like, this is probably what's going on with me. I thought coming out as a lesbian sexuality would be an easier transition for my family and friends when I started to identify as male, so I was a straight male instead of a gay woman. Well, that was half true. I started presenting as male, I think, in eighth grade. In eighth grade, I was still going by my birth name and feminine pronouns with the school system, but between friends, it was definitely Riley and it was male pronouns. At that point, my family was not 
accepting. They were very against it. They said, it's just a phase, this is stupid, you're gonna grow out of it, you're gonna be a nice young lady. And it was really, really difficult for me, but I was like, you know what, screw it. Because I still had to buy girls clothes, but I bought the more masculine things that I could. I was very into, like, band merch and t-shirts at that point, so I'd buy those and skinny jeans, and that's what I'd wear. And honestly, that's what I still wear today. My parents were very hostile at first. My parents realized that me being trans was a serious issue, and I call it an issue because and there were things that were affecting my mental health and my physical health. I was in Disney World, and my mom had been more accepting than my father, and she bought me ace bandages to bind my chest with, because I had been, and the ones I had were worn out. This is such a dangerous thing. If you are a trans, trans masculine person watching this, please do not bind with ace bandages or anything that is not an actual binder, because it is so dangerous. My mom and I didn't know the consequences of it at the time, but we were in Disney World, and I think I was 12 or 13, and I was trying to bind before we went out for the day, and it was so uncomfortable, and I was so frustrated, and my mom came in to help me, and my dad had no idea what was going on, and he ended up finding out because I walked out with the ace bandage in my hand, and I think that's when it, like, hit him that this is a serious issue, because he was very worried about me physically hurting myself, because... Ace bandages are so dangerous. They are made to like constrict movement in places, and that means you're doing that around your chest and your ribs and your lungs, and it is so dangerous. You cannot do that. I don't care if you don't have money for a binder right now. The dysphoria is way better than having a broken rib or a punctured lung. After my dad found out I was binding with Ace Bandage, literally later that day when we were in Disney World, he ordered me my first binders. And... I think it's kind of history from there. Since then, I've been supported by my family. I have gone through a legal name change, gender therapy. I am 14 months on testosterone, and it's insane. And surgery is hopefully soon down the road. I just wanted to share with you guys my coming out story and my coming out process because questioning my gender and how I identified, watching people online who identified as certain things was very important to me. And... I would see their videos and I would get inspired and I was like, hey, maybe it won't suck so bad for me. And it didn't suck so bad. So coming out is different for everybody. And I think the advice that I would give is make sure you are in a safe environment and that if something goes wrong, you get in trouble, it becomes verbally or physically abusive or just overall not safe for you. You have a place to go and get out. Um, and honestly, I would not recommend coming out if those two things are not in place because it's so, so important for you to be in a safe environment. Also, don't come out if you're not ready. Even if those things are in place, like if you are not ready to come out and share with other people what your identity is, you don't have to. It's all on you and it's your decision to come out. Well, it's not your decision to be trans, it's your decision to start your process of becoming yourself and that's totally okay if you are not ready to come out. Being trans sucks. but. There are things that make it easier, and that is the entire trans community. The trans community that I'm a part of on Tumblr and in real life, I have so many great trans friends like Kat and Jeremy, and they are amazing, amazing people, and I wouldn't trade them for the world, and I probably wouldn't know them as well as I do if I wasn't trans. And it's a great community, and it's very fun to be a part of. So basically I just wanted to share my coming out story and give little bits of advice because coming out is different for everybody. It's different levels of difficulty for everybody and you can come out as different things. And if you're not entirely sure about your gender identity at that point, just say, hey, I am might be queer if you're ready to come out but you're not sure what it is. And if you come out as one thing and then realize, oh, I'm not, you can always change it. Like, it's not... It's not a solid set in stone thing. If you start identifying as one thing and then realize, hey, this other thing is a better fit for me, go ahead, identify as that instead. You can identify as whatever you want and it's totally okay to do so. Well guys, that's all I have for you today. I really, really, really appreciate you watching this first episode of Trans Education on Trans Tuesday. So be sure to tune in on Thursday for my next main channel video and yeah. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed me 
doing trans education things. And if you want me to do more and want me to do stuff, comment down below what you want to see in Trans Tuesdays and trans education videos. That'd be really, really cool. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, I'm going to be making videos like this every Tuesday and other main channel videos every Thursday. I'm also on a collab channel called Quite the Collab, and the link will be below. So you can definitely go check that out. I am the Wednesday guy on there. I also have a side channel where I do vlogs and covers and different stuff. That channel will also be linked at the end of this video and below. On a last note, I am still doing a giveaway for GIF keyboard merch. One person has already been picked as a winner, but we have a ton more stuff to give away. So be sure you go check out the video, Best iPhone App Ever. That's the title of the video. You can watch the video, skip to the end where the giveaway stuff is. Make sure you read the description of the video for all of the contest rules and giveaway rules and how to enter. And it's really cool and I'm really excited to give away this stuff. I have two pairs of sunglasses, a water bottle, a couple stickers, and a medium sized t-shirt to give away still. And it'd be really cool and I really want to give it away to you guys. The next giveaway will take place when I reach 150 subscribers and I think I'm like 11 away from that right now. So that'll be really cool. If you want to win something, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Do all the stuff you have to do to enter that it says in the video. And if you really want to win, tell your friends to subscribe so we get to the followers quicker, or we get so we get to the subscribers quicker, and you have a better chance of winning. So be sure to go check out that video. It is best iPhone app ever. So thanks for watching the video and all my promo at the end. You guys are great. Love you. See you on Thursday.